Hey everyone, and welcome back to another deep dive. Today we're going to be exploring some seriously mind-blowing ideas about sound, frequency, and their potential impact on, well, basically everything. Yeah, this is going to be a wild one. We're diving deep into the fascinating world presented by researcher and filmmaker Michael Tellinger from his YouTube video called The Most Eye-Opening 40 Minutes of Your Life, Part 1. So buckle up. Tellinger doesn't hold back, that's for sure. Right from the get-go, he kind of throws down the gauntlet and says, much of what we've been taught is actually a carefully constructed lie. A lie. A lie. Designed to keep us in the dark about how the universe really works. Oh, wow. Okay. That's a pretty bold statement. It is. So right off the bat, Tellinger gives this really interesting example from the Bible. He suggests that the original Hebrew text may have been altered to obscure the true meaning of creation. Hmm. Interesting. What are your initial thoughts on this claim? And also this bigger idea that there's this kind of widespread deception going on. Well, I mean, it's certainly a provocative claim, but Tellinger does highlight the work of a biblical scholar who argues that the very first words of the Bible were tampered with. Tampered with. Yeah. So apparently the original Hebrew text should begin with the letter Aleph, but instead it starts with Beth. Okay. And this, this seemingly small change could drastically alter the entire meaning of the text. So break that down for me. Why is this one letter so significant? Well, you see, in Hebrew, all sacred texts must begin with a lef. So adding a lef back to the beginning, as this scholar suggests, changes the meaning. Well, from suggesting that Elohim is God to suggesting that Elohim was created by a higher power. Wow. That's referred to as the father of the beginnings. Quite a significant shift, right? That's a huge difference. Yeah. So Tellinger uses this example to argue that well, if something as fundamental as the Bible could be manipulated, what else might be hidden from us? Exactly. And it really does make you wonder. It does. And he doesn't stop there, right? He goes on to challenge some of the biggest scientific principles, what he calls the holy cows of science. Evolution, the speed of light, and the conservation of energy. Yeah, he's really not afraid to take on some pretty big targets. No, he isn't. So how should we approach claims like these? I think it's important to approach them with a healthy dose of skepticism. Of course, of course. But also a sense of curiosity and an open mind. Right. So Tellinger's not simply rejecting these well-established scientific principles. He's actually presenting evidence that he believes contradicts them. And he specifically points to sound as a potentially more fundamental force in the universe than we currently acknowledge. Right. And one of the pieces of evidence he cites is research from Middle Tennessee State University, where students actually managed to propel sound faster than the speed of light. Wait, faster than the speed of light? Faster than the speed of light. And get this, it was even published in a respected physics journal. Wow, that's incredible. It really does make you question what's possible, doesn't it? But Tellinger goes even further. He suggests that sound is not just a force but the very source of creation. The breath of the creator, as he puts it. Exactly. Shaping not just our world, but even our very DNA. Is there any basis to this? Should we take this seriously? Well, Tellinger draws on the work of Dr. Hans Jenny and his study of cymatics. No, cymatics. Yeah, it's basically the study of how sound waves can create visible patterns and shapes in matter. Oh, right, like when you see sand on a vibrating plate forming those beautiful geometric patterns. Exactly. And Tellinger uses this to suggest that sound might have shaped the very structure of the universe, including our own DNA. Wow. I mean, that's a pretty wild idea. Sound creating our DNA. I'm not sure I'm entirely convinced yet but I am definitely intrigued. As you should be. It's a very compelling theory. It is. And it seems like Tellinger is really building a case for sound being this hidden force, this fundamental building block of the universe. Is that what you're getting from this so far? Absolutely. And he backs it up with examples from ancient cultures all around the world that have revered sound as a powerful tool for healing, for creation, and even for manipulation. So ancient wisdom combined with modern scientific exploration. Precisely. He really brings those two worlds together. It's a fascinating blend. But I'm curious, what does mainstream science have to say about all this? Well, as you might imagine, there's a lot of skepticism. Many scientists would dismiss these claims as pseudoscience or unfounded speculation. Right, to be clear. However, there is a growing body of research into the therapeutic benefits of sound, particularly in areas like pain management and stress reduction. Okay, so there's at least some scientific backing for the idea that sound can influence our physical and mental states. Oh, absolutely. And while the idea of sound creating the universe might be a bit of a stretch for some, there's no denying that sound can have a powerful impact on our well-being. So it's not entirely outside the realm of possibility. Right. I mean, 
We all know how music can make us feel, how certain sounds can evoke strong emotions or memories. Exactly. Sound is a powerful force, even if we don't fully understand all its mysteries yet. Absolutely. So Tellinger's really pushing us to rethink our understanding of sound. But he doesn't stop there, does he? He takes us on a journey into what he calls a magnetoelectric universe. That's right. I mean, what is that exactly? And could sound and magnetism be more fundamental forces than we currently realize? Well, Tellinger's argument is that the universe is primarily driven by sound and magnetism. He even proposes that sound actually creates magnetic fields, which then lead to electricity. Whoa. So he's basically challenging our current understanding of physics. What would a paradigm shift like that mean for us? It would be revolutionary. Tellinger believes that understanding this could lead to incredible new technologies, including free energy. Okay, now you've got my attention. Free energy. How does he tie that to sound? Well, he points to the work of Nikola Tesla, the famous inventor and engineer who was convinced that the Earth itself could be harnessed as a source of limitless energy. Right. Tesla, the visionary genius. Exactly. And Tellinger argues that Tesla understood the power of sound and vibration and that his ideas were suppressed because they threatened the existing power structures. Interesting. So we're back to this idea of hidden knowledge and powerful forces controlling the narrative. It's a theme that runs through a lot of Tellinger's work. But even if we put aside the conspiracy theories for a moment, Tesla's ideas about sound, vibration, and the potential for free energy are definitely thought-provoking. Yeah, especially as we're searching for sustainable solutions to the energy crisis. I mean, it's fascinating to consider that something as fundamental as sound could hold the key. Right. It's definitely worth exploring further. It is. So Tellinger is proposing that the universe isn't really made of solid matter, as we might think, but of vibrations. And that everything from the tiniest particles to the largest galaxies is composed of sound and magnetism. It's a radical idea, but one that has a certain elegance to it. It does. And he believes that understanding this principle could unlock incredible potential, not just for technology, but also for our own consciousness. Our consciousness? Yes, consciousness. How does that tie in? Well, Tellinger links the creative power of sound to our thoughts, words, and even the symbols we encounter. He suggests that our thoughts and emotions have a vibrational frequency, and that by understanding this, we can learn to manifest our desires and shape our own reality. Wow, that's pretty deep stuff. It is. So we're talking about sound, potentially creating the universe, shaping our thoughts and bodies. It's a lot to wrap our heads around. It's definitely a deep dive, even for us. It is. But it's an incredibly fascinating journey so far. It is. And we've only just begun to scratch the surface. That's right. Tellinger has a lot more to share, so stay tuned because we're just getting started. I can't wait to hear what he has to say next. Me neither. This is definitely one of those deep dives that I think will leave us with more questions than answers, but in a good way. I'm already starting to think about the world a little differently. What about you? Absolutely. It's definitely food for thought. It is. So let's take a quick break and then we'll come back and delve even deeper into Tellinger's mind-blowing ideas. Stay with us. Welcome back. Before the break, we were talking about how Michael Tellinger believes that we're not just passive observers in the universe. Right, but active creators. Exactly. And Tellinger doesn't shy away from exploring the implications of this. He suggests that this creative power can be used for both good and bad. Yeah, he talked about how ancient cultures might have used sound for healing, but also for control and manipulation. Right. And one example he gave was how they might have used those cone-shaped tools to influence the pineal gland which Tellinger connects to the Eye of Horus symbol. Exact. It's pretty fascinating stuff. It is, and he even draws parallels to some modern technologies that he believes might be based on similar principles. Like what? Well, he talks about how certain frequencies are used in the media and advertising to potentially influence our thoughts and behaviors. So this isn't just ancient history. He's suggesting this is happening right now. That's his point. He argues that this knowledge of sound and its power has been passed down through the ages and that it's being used today, often in ways that we're not even aware of. I have to admit, this is starting to sound a bit like a conspiracy theory. It can be easy to dismiss these ideas, but I think it's important to remember that throughout history, knowledge has been suppressed or controlled by those in power. That's true. And with the rise of technology and social media, it's more important now than ever to be critical thinkers. <laughs> to question the information that we're being fed. Exactly. But if we entertain this idea for a moment, that sound can be used to manipulate how can we protect ourselves? That's a great question. Any ideas? Tellinger suggests that we need to really tap into our intuition. Our gut feeling. 
Yes. Yeah. He encourages us to question everything, do our own research, and really trust our own experiences. That makes sense. But with so much information out there, it can feel overwhelming. Where do we even begin? Tellinger suggests that we should start by paying attention to the patterns and synchronicities in our own lives. The synchronicities. You know, like those times when things just seem to line up perfectly or you get a strong gut feeling that leads you in the right direction. He believes these are messages from the universe guiding us towards our true path. I've definitely had those moments where it feels like the universe is trying to tell me something. Exactly. Tellinger is saying that we need to be more mindful and aware of those subtle cues all around us. And to be open to the possibility that there's more to reality than meets the eye. Exactly. He reminds us that the universe is constantly communicating with us. But we need to be quiet and receptive enough to hear its whispers. Precisely. That's a beautiful way to put it. But how do we actually apply this to our everyday lives? Well, Tellinger really emphasizes the importance of our thoughts, words, and actions. Okay. He believes that we have the power to create our own reality through the vibrations that we emit. Wait, are you saying our thoughts can actually influence the physical world around us? That's what he's suggesting. He even brings up the work of Dr. Mizaru Emoto. He studied the effects of words and intentions on water crystals. Oh, right. I think I've heard of that. His research showed that positive words and thoughts actually created beautiful, symmetrical crystals. Really? While negative words and thoughts created distorted, chaotic ones. Wow, that's fascinating. It is. Tellinger believes that everything is interconnected and that our thoughts and emotions create vibrations that ripple out into the world around us. Okay, so it's like dropping a pebble in a pond. Mm -hmm. The ripples spread outward, affecting everything in their path. A perfect analogy. So essentially, we have a responsibility to be mindful of the vibrations we're putting out into the world. So we should really choose our words carefully. Yes. Focus on positive thoughts and emotions, and most importantly, to act with intention. I'm starting to see how this all connects. It's about aligning our thoughts, words, and actions with the vibrations that we want to manifest in our lives. That's it. And Tellinger believes that when we do this, we can tap into this incredibly powerful creative force. That can help us to achieve our dreams. And live much more fulfilling lives. This is really inspiring stuff. It is, but it's also a lot of responsibility. Yeah, it can feel a little daunting. It can, but it's also incredibly empowering. You see, Tellinger reminds us that we actually have the power to choose the reality that we want to experience. So we're not just victims of circumstance. No. We're the creators of our own destiny. We have the power to shape our lives and the world around us. I love that. It's about taking ownership of our lives and realizing that we have so much more agency than we often think. Exactly. And Tellinger also reminds us that we're all interconnected. So the vibrations that we emit not only affect ourselves, but also everyone and everything around us. It really is a lot to digest. Tellinger's ideas really challenge us to think differently about the universe, about ourselves and the power of sound. They do. But he doesn't stop there. He then goes on to explore some pretty radical ideas about the Earth's magnetic field. Oh, yeah, that's right. He argues that the traditional model, with a molten iron core generating the magnetism, doesn't quite add up. Nope. Instead, he suggests that sound plays a more fundamental role. He believes that the Earth is essentially resonating. Resonating. Creating this toroidal magnetic field. Hold on a sec. Is he saying the Earth is like a giant speaker? In a way, yes. He sees the Earth as this complex, vibrating system. With sound waves traveling through the planet. Creating the magnetic field that surrounds us. I mean, is there any evidence to support this idea? Well, he references researchers who have detected infrasound, which is sound below the range of human hearing, coming from the Earth. So he's connecting these sounds. To earthquakes and specific sound frequencies. So he's suggesting that the Earth's vibrations, its sounds, are actually what creates the magnetic field not a molten iron core. That's his theory. And Tellinger believes that if we could understand this, it could lead to incredible new technologies. Like what? Well, for example, we might be able to harness energy in a whole new way and maybe even influence the weather. Influence the weather. That's a bold claim. It is. But even if we don't completely buy into all of his theories, the idea that the Earth is a dynamic, vibrating system is fascinating in its own right. It is. It makes you really appreciate the interconnectedness of everything. Exactly. And it opens up a whole new world of possibilities when we start to think about the relationship between sound, magnetism, and the Earth itself. It's mind-blowing to think that something as simple as sound 
could be at the heart of so many complex phenomena. Right. It really makes you wonder what other secrets the universe is hiding from us. It does. And that's what makes this deep dive so exciting. We're really pushing the boundaries of our understanding. Tellinger's not afraid to ask the big questions. And to challenge conventional thinking. That's what I love about his work. He encourages us to be curious. To explore the unknown. And to never stop seeking knowledge. I think we could all use a little bit more of that in our lives. Wow, what a journey this has been. Exploring Michael Tellinger's ideas about sound, magnetism, and the nature of reality, it's been a real mind bender. It has. Tellinger throws out some really challenging concepts, but even if we don't agree with everything, I think his focus on the interconnectedness of everything is really powerful. Yeah, this idea that we're all part of this incredible web of vibrations, constantly influencing and being influenced by everything around us, it makes you feel a lot less like an isolated individual. Exactly. Like we're all part of something much, much bigger. And Tallinger takes it a step further, suggesting that we can tap into this interconnectedness through sound, using it for healing, creation, and even evolving our consciousness. So it's not just about understanding sound intellectually. It's about actually experiencing it, using it as a tool for transformation. That's the core of it. He believes that sound holds the key to a deeper understanding of ourselves and the universe. Okay, that sounds amazing. But how do we actually do that? How do we access this power of sound? Tellinger emphasizes the importance of listening, not just with our ears, but with our entire being. With our whole being. Yeah, paying attention to the subtle vibrations around us, the rhythms of nature, the music of the cosmos, it's all connected. So, like, tuning into the frequencies that are already there, the symphony of the universe that's always playing around us. Precisely. And he also encourages us to explore the power of our own voices, using sound as a tool for self-expression, healing, and connecting with our inner wisdom. So things like chanting, singing, toning, those are all ways to tap into this power. Absolutely. Even just speaking with intention, choosing our words carefully can have a big impact on our well-being and the energy we put out into the world. It's incredible to think that something as simple as sound could be so powerful. We really do take it for granted. We do. Tellinger believes we've only just scratched the surface of what's possible with sound. He imagines a future where sound is used to create new technologies, heal diseases, solve global problems. It's a hopeful vision of a future where sound is used for good. It's an exciting vision, one that really makes us think about the possibilities and how sound shapes our reality. It leaves us with a sense of wonder, doesn't it? It does. And even if we don't agree with all of his ideas, it reminds us to be curious, to question, and to never stop exploring. That's the heart of true discovery. Well, this has been an incredible journey, exploring some truly mind-blowing ideas, from free energy to the idea that our thoughts can shape reality. I feel like I've been given a whole new way of looking at the world. Me too. It's definitely sparked my curiosity and a desire to learn more. A huge thank you to all of you for joining us on this extraordinary deep dive into the world of sound and its potential. Remember to check back daily for new deep dives, and if you're hungry for more mind-expanding content, visit us at www.ultimatemasters.org coaching. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and keep listening to the whispers of the universe.